everyone, uh, and uh, welcome to uh, the Linux Foundation Public Health uh, webinar uh, presentation on Global COVID Certificate Network. Uh, we uh, This is a new initiative uh, <clears throat> launched uh, just a few weeks back, uh, based very much on our work uh, as a part of the Global Health Pass Collaborative, I'm sorry, Good Health Pass Collaborative, uh, and uh, based uh, on our, our six months now of engagement in this domain of uh, using a new approach to digital identity to reinvent uh, and address the, the uh, crisis in the, uh, in the pandemic space by uh, giving a, a privacy preserving approach to the presentation of proof of vaccination or test result. Uh, uh, in, uh, especially when it comes to reopening borders and being able to have these be portable across those borders. Uh, this is a really exciting space, a, a space with a whole lot of noise, a whole lot of uh, uh, ideas, a whole lot of very valid concerns about how this scales up, how it addresses the needs for privacy, uh, and, uh, and how we'll do this in a cooperative way when there are uh, uh, have emerged so many different approaches to doing this. So GCCN is our major thrust in this domain, uh, and it builds on uh, so much of the work we've done. Uh, and so uh, really excited to present more on this uh, to you. Um, with that, I'd like to hand the microphone over to Lucy. Uh, Lucy has really been leading our efforts in this domain. Uh, it's been putting together the coalition uh, of different organizations uh, and uh, relationships with governments and, and the like uh, to move forward on this. Uh, and so with that, let me pass the baton to Lucy and let her drive the bulk of the presentation. Lucy. Thanks, Brian, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Lucy Yan. I'm a staff on the OFPH team and also the community director of the COVID Credentials Initiative. Uh, we're a part of OFPH. And, and today we also have uh, Clea Young and John Walker from, from the OFPH team, also from the CCI team, join us today and, and support, support this webinar with you know, Q and A's and addressing different part of uh, the questions. You know, hopefully we will have a good engagement at, after my presentation. And it's been very excited. And as Brian mentioned, this is a major effort of OPH, you know, today to present on this effort and, and also share with you some of the exciting updates so we had in the past a few weeks. So GCCN is a, is it a new effort, new Linux Foundation Public Health Initiative for us to enable jurisdictions and to safely reopen borders and through interoperable and trustworthy verification of COVID certificates. And in GCCN, we, we support beyond just vaccine certificates. We're also, like, in, we're also supporting use cases such as recovery from infection and, and test results. So this is very much uh, aligned with the EU effort and also the, the most recently um, expanded efforts of WHO in terms of the, 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 the scope of the use cases we're supporting through GCCN. And, and LPH will work closely with governments industry alliances and also software vendors and system integrators, as well as many organizations who already sign up to support GCCN uh, and also the broader community of RFPH to implement a GCCN, which includes a jointly developing a trustworthy free network and a complete set of, of toolkit to help jurisdictions build COVID certificate systems for their jurisdictions, for the citizens, and, and, and also a vendor network to help jurisdictions implement and, and also um, implement and, 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 and in, implement and provide guidance. So before we dive more into the different components of GCCN, let's take a look at so what is the current status globally uh, of COVID certificates and also the interoperability aspect of the COVID certificates. So as many of you may, may notice, this space has been fragmented and to some extent confusing because there are many organizations and entities at different levels, you know, government entities, industries, and individual companies who have been participating in the space, developing solutions and, and also on technical specifications and also different initiatives and efforts. So one prominent effort and also large scale effort is led by the EU. It's called the EU COVID, Digital COVID Certificate. So one of the most recent and big move from the EU is the launch uh, it's a pilot launch of the EU digital COVID certificate with the, the EU gateway going live together uh, with multiple uh, member states national systems on June 1st. So in two days, uh, on, on July 1st, that's when all member states will have their system available for the citizens and to, to, get, uh, to receive credentials and use that for, for cross borders within the EU. 
So what essentially the EU digital COVID certificate uh, is, is providing is two things. One thing is the gate, the EU gateway, and which is essentially a, a centralized repository for member states, for EU member states to list their public keys, which they will use to sign certificates for the citizens and also which, uh, for, for the verifiers they're authorized to access and um, to, to verify the certificates. So essentially this is a, a, a trust, there's two functionalities that EU gateways are providing. One is the verification. So verifying if a certificate from a particular member state is, is issued by a trusted party. And another, another, uh, another functionality is a validation, validating if the certificate contains the right, uh, the right data and also if the data actually meeting the requirements of, of, the, uh, of the rule to entry rules. So even though the data itself, the processing of data happened at member state level, that the EU gateway is facilitating that, that uh, validation. And the second component uh, of the EU digital COVID certificate is the member state, uh, is a member state certificate systems. And the member state systems are integrated with the gateway and, and the EU also provides guidelines and technical specifications as well as open source refer reference implementations for the member state to implement their own system. And, and the member state has certain flexibilities to, to define how they want to distribute their public keys at the member state level. So with that, so after, after the EU launched the, the digital, uh, their digital COVID certificate, there are multiple challenges we, we've identified. So um, first of all, not every country are, can participate in the EU system. And, and at the same time, the WHO announced, you know, ch announced a change of their initial plan of, uh, of providing a, a global trust architecture, which means now there's a lack of global trust architecture, which, uh, which can facilitate the verifiers in, in every jurisdiction, in, in one jurisdiction to make a decision about whether they're going to accept the credential or certificate from another jurisdiction. So another challenge we saw is, is the government policymakers and technology teams so don't have enough clarity about what is the best way to build a, a national or a jurisdictional COVID certificate system for cross-border uh, use cases. And, and they, some of them, they, are, they can borrow. I mean, they're borrowing from the EU, but, but eventually they won't be able to, to leverage the entire, uh, the entire system because they're not part of the, the EU ecosystem. So given these challenges, we ask ourselves as a global organization building open source software for public health, what we can do right, to provide that global level of interoperability and trustworthy infrastructure and tools for jurisdictions to reopen borders safely. So here we are today. So we, we, uh, we created the Global COVID Certificate Network about three weeks ago to, to address these challenges. And the key component of GCCN, first and foremost, is what we call the Trust Registry Network. So this, this the Trust Registry Network is providing similar functionalities and as, and as the EU gateway. It essentially pro uh, provides a way for, for different jurisdictions for, for participating jurisdictions and ecosystems to list their trust registries of the issuers and verifiers and also relevant rules that they're applying to the issuings and verifying verification of the, the, um, the certificate so that they can they can find each other and as part of the network as part of the art direct directory whether you know they want to accept uh, each other's uh, certificates and also also the and the network also provides them a mechanism so they can talk to each other and discover the information they need to make that decision. So the role of LPH is, is facilitate the development of trust uh, of trust registry protocol, which is pretty much like the, 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 the technical specifications and also the governance components of it that allows each jurisdiction and who participate in the network to use to build their software that allow them to talk with each other in, in an interoperable way. So, and also what we're gonna do is set up a lightweight initial governance and facilitate the entities, participating entities in the network to self-govern moving forward. So just a very, a very briefly, just the, the key difference between the EU model and the GCCN model. is So the EU is a central, is a central government authority that they can, def, you know, they define and they can also centrally manage who, which member states 
and, and also which which one outside of the EU can be listed of the trust registry directory. It's pretty much the gateway and the, the central repository of public keys who can be part of the EU system. And, and, and also the same thing with member states. The member state as also a central authority, they can define who can be the trusted issuers and verifiers. And, and but whoever are not uh, list whoever are not listed as qualified issuers and verified, they won't be able to participate in the EU ecosystem, which is posing certain challenges and certain uh, scalability challenges in, 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 in terms of participating in, in, the, in, in the EU ecosystem. But the GCSCN in, in, in provide a more flexible and also decentralized way. So what we have in place, so we, we won't be, because we are not a centralized government authority, so we won't be saying, oh, who we will include in system. What we will provide is a framework that will, will, will let you know if you want to participate in the network or want to be an entry of our directory, what information you have to provide, right? So that you know every, others can, can find out, can decide based on those information, are they gonna accept your credentials or certificates? And also another key component is the trust registry protocol. It's pretty much the technical specifications you need to follow and you need to be compliant with so like your trust registries can actually talk to others within the same network. So that's the essential differences between the EU model and the GCCN model. Another very, uh, very important component of uh, GCCN is, is we're providing a complete toolkit for jurisdictions to build their own credential and work certificate ecosystems, which will allow them to, to verify credentials in an interoperable and privacy preserving way. As Brian mentioned in the introduction, we're, we, our community care a lot about how we can provide, uh, pr protect an individual's information in the way, but also allowing them um, to leverage the information, the data they have on their certificates to gain access into a country or into, into certain spaces. And, and as part of the toolkit, as you can see, there's a list of documents and, we, we're, and support we're, we're hoping to provide. And uh, I won't go into the details of each one of them, but the, the essential idea is we'll be working with our community and also multiple other communities to collaboratively develop um, these documents and so that we can, um, and as well as the software components, the open source reference implementations, as well as the guidance jurisdictions needed to implement their, their, system, their COVID certificate ecosystem. And lastly, another very important component is the vendor network. So at LFH and also at the COVID Connections Initiative, we already have a, a, a good participation from vendors who have been implementing um, COVID certificate systems and in, their, you know, in their local context and also even globally. So we're hoping uh, uh, to provide, by providing this uh, vendor network, jurisdictions who are participating in GCCN, if you don't have a technology vendor yet, or if you want someone who has expertise experience building this type of uh, ecosystem, you can access to the resources and help you uh, get your system up and running very, very quickly. So, and also as Brian mentioned in, in the introduction, right, the GCCN, GCCN work seems a, 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 a lot of like a work for us to, to develop and to collaborate on, but fortunately GCCN is not, it, it is not building from, from zero. You know, it, we already have a very, very solid foundation, which is a Good House Pass interoperability bl blueprint. And, and the, inter uh, the Good House Pass blueprint came from the Good House Pass interoperability working group set up by the Good House Pass Collaborative uh, about two, three months ago, and, and that the working group is dedicated to identify the ch interoperability challenges and, and also tackle the challenges, pro providing the recommendations that needed to, to, to address it both from the technical and a governance point of view. So the Good House Pass Collaborative was initially set up by ID2020 and also program management my, uh, 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 ID2020 and Trust OIP Foundation, was a sister, which is a sister project of uh, Linux Foundation Public Health and the Linux Foundation, provided the, the governance and the IP structure to host the working group, which most of the, 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 uh, the drafting, of the, uh, with, uh, drafting of the recommendations happen. And the COVID Connections Initiative, prior to, to the Good House Pass effort, already started on some of the preliminary standard, standard and standardization efforts. And our work has been referenced and also 
which contributed to the Good House Pass blueprint. A, a lot of community members and, and also community leaders have been participating and contributing um, to the development of the blueprint. And, and the Linux Foundation Public Health and at the higher level also have been supporting and contributing to the running and managing uh, um, uh, of the, the Good House Pass collaborative as well. So, so when the Good House Pass was nearing its completion about three weeks ago, together with the, e, the context of the, e, the launch of the EU uh, system, we decided it's time, it was time, it was the right timing for us to create GCCN so that we can operationalize the recommendations that come from the Good House Pass blueprint as well as providing the feedback for them to keep iterating for the next version. So what are the next steps? So we have been already started on a lot of the important pieces of GCCN, but here are the three Three things you've, you're seeing on the slides are the key next steps we're, we're hoping uh, we've been working on, and since the, the launch of GCCN also will be in the upcoming months. So one thing is the, how we can turn the Good House Pass uh, blueprint recommendations into implementable and minimal viable products for GCCN, and also to collaboratively develop the technical documents and code bases needed for jurisdictions to implement it. And second of all. The EU collaboration, right? The EU system is up and running and will be in full, in going in full swing in, in about two two days. So how we can collaborate with the EU and to to explore and so uh, so we've been collaborating with the multiple EU institutions to explore and create and create conversion mechanisms between the EU digital COVID certificate and all the, the new and existing COVID uh, certificate ecosystem through GCCN. So this is something will be very, very important to achieve the global level of interoperability and trustworthy exchange of credentials. And lastly, the interoperability pilot. So we've uh, been working a lot with existing implementers of COVID certificate systems in the past year and, month, uh, and, and months. So we're hoping, and also we're actively working, speaking with these implementers to set up interoperability pilot so we can sh not only showcase but uh, not, not only showcase but also actually test what what pieces of of the technical uh, uh what pieces worked and also how we can improve uh, on the recommendations and all the technical documents for gccn so obviously this work you know we can't uh, we'll be needing a lot of support from the community and from many communities so if if you are interested in in participating in GCCN, following uh, uh, in getting updates on GCCN, sign up for our email communications. And and also if you identify yourself as one of uh, one of the categories we've listed, you know if your government industry uh, agencies or industry alliances were already running or looking to launch a COVID certificate ecosystem, reach out to us. And if you're an you're implementer for governments or industries, and um, also reach out to us and join our Slack channel. That's where our implementers are collaborating and, and having discussions. And lastly, if you're a developer who are already ready to contribute to the GCC efforts, we, are, uh, we have at OPH two COVID credential projects, Cardia and, and Matt Kreitz, who are actively working to, to implement the recommendations of the Good House Pass. So we certainly recommend check them out and, and get and, and contribute it and, and contribute those projects. So our up, uh, progress to date. So since the launch uh, about three weeks ago, there are two two components we've just uh, uh, shared with the community last week. So one key component is a GCCN user flow version one. So this user flow is building off the Good House Pass recommendations. So we, we're trying to map out. So one of the key key overarching recommendation from the Good House Pass uh, interoperability blueprint is to convert a house certificate or credential into a house uh, travel pass that contains minimal data for travel purposes. So GCCN want to prioritize mapping out what the user flow would look like, what are the different uh, the alternatives to convert a certificate into a house pass. So that's like the version one, what we, are, we have focused on for the version one of the user flow. So I've included a, few, a full view of the user flow in, in the deck. And also we have 
been working on a blog post explaining in further details what each step that means. So we were sharing the slides with you guys. We'll also include the blog, the link to the blog post, so you can have a closer look at how uh, how the how GCC and user flow works. And second of all, like the GCC and trust registry network definition. So as you probably already noticed, the the inter the, the trust registry network is the key to facilitate interoperability among participants of, uh, of the GCCN model. So we started a template document and also discovery process with our key stakeholders and, and potential participants of the network to define and further detail exactly what the trust registry network needs to be. And especially the minimum, minimum kind of governance, what information they need to provide to begin with so we can get the network started and running. And also I included the full document of definition so you can look at the questions we're asking ourselves and also our stakeholders to answer and also what we what are the what are like the ongoing conversations of, uh, of the stakeholders in terms of how we can prioritize and, and, and how we can prioritize and what would be the minimum viable products we can go with the trust registry now. So lastly, if you if you don't know if you don't know much about LPH and CCI yet, we've included some information about us. So LPH was launched uh, last summer to, to to help public health authorities and beyond to ensure that investment into public health technology meet common needs and have maximum impact. <laughs> LPH started with exposure notification apps and expanded into COVID credentials late last year. That's when the COVID Credentials Initiative joined LPH. And the COVID Credentials Initiative, like we recently uh, uh, become chartered under the Joint Development Foundation. So we have the proper legal and also the governance structure to help us further our standardization work. And this has been, the standardization work has been going on since we joined LPH. And we're ex very excited to take this work to another level to support LPH, to incubate ideas and credential related projects for not only LPH, but also other, other communities that are doing relevant work. So with that, I'm gonna see if any questions from, from the audience and I'm gonna stop sharing so we can see each other's face. So Brian, uh, do you want to take it over and, and see how? Um, sure. Well, uh, it looks like there were two questions asked and answered. Uh, and uh, I just uh, we could start with uh, uh, whether there's any anything we wanted to add to this first one about um, uh, Dan's question about schema for trust metadata must be established as well. What issuers can issue which types of EC, that sort of thing. Um, I, and, I, I, and, and, and John helped answer that this was something that's, that's gonna be baked into the uh, trust registry, right? Um, uh, into the, trust, the, the directory of trust registries we have. Um, perhaps John, you could elaborate on that a little bit more. Sure. So great question, Dan. The, what we're looking at right now is um, basically how, how can we codify the, the metadata you're describing in rules? And there's an example of that at, um, in uh, basically Indy Aries um, that some people are experimenting with. We want to see if we can generalize that outside of the, the, that ecosystem of infrastructure and, and agents. Um, and basically that's the idea is that to find rules an open source syntax of rules that we can uh, codify the actions of the ac actors in a trust registry. And then um, with that, basically though they are governed by, that will be governed by a governance framework, which will be defined in each entry of our uh, trust directory. So think of it like the, the rules will be codified at the individual level. And then one would look that up as, as, as an entry in the overall trust directory, if that helps. So we're just beginning that investigation, but that's our that's our target. Thanks, John. Sure. Um, let, let's talk about no, Noam's question then. Noam Arts asked, uh, any contact or interest with the US federal government? Uh, something Drummond's interested in as well. Um, obviously, we I, I had been in touch over the last six months uh, with the federal government, uh, with ONC, uh, I would say had chosen to kind of let the states lead 
uh, on this topic. Uh, you've seen states like New York uh, State obviously move ahead with Excelsior Pass, uh, which is a very close, uh, closely related set of technologies. And in fact, the team who had been working on Excelsior Pass from IBM have been really engaged with us in thinking about how to, to bridge between the kinds of projects that the IBM Health Pass team is working on for people like them and Australia, I'm uh, sorry, Ireland and, and others uh, with, with uh, the EU systems and others that we've talked about here. So we are very hopeful that we come up with a process that actually helps bridge not only between regions like the EU and countries uh, out there, but also between the different United States states that have been setting these uh, systems up. Uh, we also realize, you know, country, uh, some states like California have started to issue smart health card formatted uh, QR codes and the like, and the Good Health Pass collaborative uh, schema does allow for those to be ingested, but that's just in the standards. We haven't really figured out uh, the software uh, focused on that the, the side uh, of that yet, but um, we certainly want to build a big tent here and want to figure out how to transform that kind of signed clinical data into health passes that can be portable and privacy respecting. So in the long form, long term, yes, we'd like to see all this work together. Uh, we have the door open and a good relationship with ONC. I know they're still looking for leadership from the states on this front though. And so that'll probably be our first area of focus is on getting states somehow involved with GCCN. I don't know, Lucy or, or, or Kalia, if there's anything you wanted to add. I think probably one good thing about GCCN, right? We're not limiting to like federal government, an entire country, right? We can we can work, uh, start working with jurisdictions like in states, multiple states in the U.S. who are interested in participating, right? And then gradually getting more attention and getting more kind of confidence from the federal level to to you know, further participate in in GCCN. I think that's the the kind of flexibility part. Uh, we're, we're providing and, and not only and also the, the participation participation of GCCN are not only limited to governments right certain countries and jurisdictions right there the, the industries sometimes the business world are leading the creation of such an ecosystem so we won't be limiting you know in, in the their you know ability to join us so as long as you know we we have that the basic you know, governance what information need to provide will give them an opportunity to participate so they can decide you know who how they can how, how they can work and you know, accept each other's credentials. But I think that's the, 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 the merits of the model of GCCN. Drummond asked a question, <clears throat> is there any plan for integration with VCI and their smart health cards? Um, uh, there's been no explicit outreach yet to, to, to VCI, to, to Microsoft, to others that have adopted those technologies. It's obviously a big part of um, the Good Health Pass Collaborative's blueprint was how to ingest these other kinds of credentials uh, and transform them. Uh, we'd like to figure that out. There are some partners involved in GCCN who uh, are being asked to support that kind of technology in their in their wallets and in their verifier software. Um, we think there's a lot of prospect for universal verifier software to, uh, or at least libraries, to be able to 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 unify the different uh, uh, verification of the different credential formats out there to potentially be some of the software we provide as part of the toolkit for for from GCCN. Um, so so eager to explore that, but again, no no explicit relationship between us and those organizations yet. Okay. Uh, Noam continued, but other countries will likely only be interested in a U.S. federal solution. Will a border agent in Vienna say <clears throat> what, to, uh, uh, what to see a VC from Arkansas and be expected to know what that even means? Clearly, there's a lot of work to do in getting both the Good Health Pass interoperability blueprint out there and widely understood, so people know uh, how do we we get to a point where hopefully a border agent, uh, whether in the United States, whether in any of the states in the United States, or globally will have one or a very small set of uh, uh, apps that they'll need to run to be able to verify codes, be able to verify credentials that are presented to them. Uh, that's the whole goal of this. You know, the bo a border agent shouldn't need 176 different different apps for 176 different countries, right? I, I, that's how we'll know we'll be successful. But that takes not just the code, uh, it takes building the trust registries and uh, uh, relationships, but also a lot of education and advocacy. And I'm hopeful that on the education and advocacy side, there's other organizations that will help us, uh, such as the continued work of the Good Health Pass, Good Health Pass Collaborative, um, uh, and obviously the vendor community as well, I think has a big role to play in that. Also just add to what Brian said. So based on our conversation with multiple countries, I, 
we we don't see like a challenge of if the federal government are not implementing a solution, other jurisdictions are not interested. Like we 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 certainly mentioned about like situation in the U.S. and we got interest from from other countries. Where all we can start with one state or several states, right? So that's and so far this hasn't been kind of a, quite a challenge for us when, when getting into conversations uh, with with some other countries. Brian, you're on mute. Yes, sorry. Um, that's all the open questions. Uh, I think we did a fair dive into to each of those. Um, uh, maybe another minute for other questions to open. I don't know if Kalia or John, if there's anything else you wanted to add. The, no, I mean, I'll just add that I'm really excited about the work and I think it's a really positive next step um, for, um, making you know taking the good health pass blueprint which is <laughs> coming out in the next few days and um having really practical things to to be able to do to start um learning and iterating and implementing yeah and I, the only thing I, I would add on that is just there's a couple significant layers to that right one is the fleshing out um the trust diamond right at the individual uh trust network and then the uh, the great collaboration that can come together as we define the registry of these of these trust uh, trusted registries so excited about that you think so um one thing i want to really emphasize is this is still a work in progress there's still a lot of hard work to do here um it, you know from building the software that is uh, uh the you know uh, uh, <clears throat> the the toolkit the the reference implementations the all of that stuff to the software that sits and the, and the processes that sit behind the trust registries the directory of trust registries um to all of the the education that has to happen out there we need everyone's help uh, we don't want to come here and say we've got all the answers, we've got all the plan, or that we know um, all the pieces that even need to be built. There might be additional pieces. Um, this is an all hands on deck kind of situation, I think, because we are now seeing uh, uh, not just the first generation of these apps out there, but kind of you know some of the processes around them starting to harden a bit, uh, and people are really eager to start traveling again, um, really eager to uh, uh, know that they can do that safely. Uh, I, and this pandemic is not by any means a stretch in the rearview mirror yet for any of us. So um, I think this is it's su super important for all of the vendors in this space to work together for the countries to realize their needs might be different, but they are probably not unique. Uh, and for all of us to, to find how do we collaborate together on, on as much as possible so that we can get this stuff out there rolled out quickly and and get to traveling again getting to see each other face to face again that is that's that's why we're here right so i i with that I, it was there one more question i'm oh, sorry um uh neil thank you uh asked the question countries may disagree on which are valid vaccines or tests and also trust of one country's issuers by others. This suggests that a trust framework across govern governance and certification of issuers, which is a role only national governments can really play, is that part of the immediate or longer term plan? I think everything we're doing recognizes that governments uh, at whatever level, at a national level, at a state level, perhaps even at a local level, uh, have the prerogative here to define what is uh, what what is trustworthy when it comes to both who are allowed to issue those credentials within their jurisdiction, uh, uh, and and what are the valid ways of verifying that, right? Uh, whose other countries' uh, vaccines or or attestations of having given the vaccine are worth accepting, right? And there are quite a few different vaccines out there with different characteristics, and this is a disease that is mutating quite a bit. And one vaccination might not be the same as another over time. That is definitely a local decision. And what we believe uh, we'll be able to support through this directory of trust registries is enough flexibility at the local jurisdiction layer to allow those jurisdictions to do their job, which is to decide you know, what, which ones are valid uh, uh, issuers, uh, both locally as well as what kinds will we accept globally. And to allow that to be clear and understood uh, and, and uh, able for the software to, to just work, to be able to query against that 
set of policies. Uh, but while all the underlying plumbing is the same, all the underlying technology is the same, uh, so that we get interoperability and, and clarity uh, and predictability in this system. So, uh, I, I, Neil, you're absolutely right that governments are the ones in that position, and that's why we've been working with, um, in, in addition to, to working with implementers and, and technologists, and obviously the standards processes, also talking with uh, uh, people inside government and people working very closely on government projects to ground this in the reality of uh, what it means to get it deployed and, and meet their needs. Thanks for the question. Okay, with that, um, I think we'll wrap up then. Um, thank you, Lucy, uh, for walking us through that content. Thank you, John and Kalia for the additional content. Thank you to all of you for, for really some smart questions that I think help flesh this out for everybody. Uh, and um, look forward to, uh, we all look forward to building this collaboratively with all of you. So uh, see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Hey, thanks, Brian. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.